video we are going to introduce the type of proofs and basic terminologies used in a proofs as well as the definition required for proving the particular statement also we will cover the first type of proof what is direct proof and how to prove the statement with the help of direct proof basically there are seven types of proof we are going to deal in this lecture series the first is a direct proof second is a proof by contraposition third is a proof by contradiction fourth is a vacuous proof fifth is a trivial proof next is a proof by equivalence and the last is proof by counterexample so here we have four six proofs that are used to prove that the statement is true whereas the seventh proof is used to prove that statement is false but in this video we are going to cover only one type of proof that is direct proof before that we will move to the basic terminologies used in the type of proofs the first basic terminology is theorem theorem means it is a statement that can be shown to be true ab theorem kya hoti hai ek aisi statement jis statement ko hum show kar sakte hain ki that is true statement generally theorems can also be referred as a fact or result ye koi ek fact hoga ya fir koi result hota hai jisko hum theorem ke word se recognize karte hain just take an example so taking an example like we have done already triangle sum theorem in our primary classes like sum of all angles in a triangle is always 180 degree so this is called as a theorem so this is a true statement and in primary classes we have already proved that the statement is true and that statement is called as basically theorem next term is corollary a corollary is the theorem that can be established directly from the theorem that has been proved like in the previous case we have taken an example sum of all angles in a triangle is always 180 degree from here we can reduce one more result that is the acute angles of a right angle triangles are always complementary complementary means the sum of two angle is equal to 90 degree so this is a clearly true statement as we have taken in a triangle we have a three angles so we are saying that the sum of all the angle is equal to 180 degree and when we are saying we have right angle triangle obviously one angle is 90 and we are saying x plus y is equal to 90 degree so these are two are called as a acute angle so we can say that acute angles of right angle triangles are always complementary means its sum is 90 degree that directly reduced from the statement next word is a proof now what do you mean by proof basically a proof is a valid argument that establishes the truth of this theorem it means we are providing a particular argument hum aise statements hum likhte hain jahan se hum clearly keh sakte hain theorem true hai next word is a axiom ab axioms kya hote hain it is a statement that is used in a proof that we are already assume to be true for example we are proving any statement and we have said that for odd integer n so we have imposed n is odd integer that is we are assuming the statement is true to hum yahan pe assume kare ki n sirf odd integer hai kuch aur nahi means it is not even so such statements are called as a axiom there is one more word that is called as a lemma it is basically a theorem or we can say that a less important theorem that is helpful in the proof of other result that is called as a lemma jab hum kisi theorem ko recall karte hain particular statement ke proof mein basically that theorem is called as a lemma next word is conjecture conjecture is a statement that is mean proposed to be a true statement usually on the basis of some partial evidence or the intuition of experts now what does it means 
अब एक ऐसी स्टेटमेंट है जिसको हम अज्यूम करते हैं कि वो ट्रू है ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मे बी सम पार्शल एविडेंस और मे बी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इंट्यूशन ऑफ एक्सपर्ट ऑल दो उसका प्रूफ अवेलेबल नहीं है वी आर अज्यूमिंग इट इज ट्रू कुछ एविडेंस के बेसिस पे फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ वी टेक ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर वॉट डू मीन बाई ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर आर प्राइम नंबर डिफर बाय टू मीन्स देर डिफरेंस एज टू एग्जाम्पल लाइक थ्री फाइव देर डिफरेंस एज टू सो दीज टू नंबर आर कॉल्ड एज अ ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर फाइव सेवन अगेन डिफरेंस एज टू सो दे आर कॉल्ड एज अ ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर इलेवन थर्टी अगेन ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर सेवनटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेन प्राइम नंबर and there are many more based on this one we have twin prime conductor it says that there are infinitely twin prime numbers many researcher has researched on the statement they have found it a largest number with the help of supercomputers but there is no proof available for the statement although based on some partial evidence or the intuition of the expert we are saying that the statement is true so that's why the statement is not called as a theorem but it is called as a twin prime conjecture so once the proof of conjecture is found that conjecture becomes theorem so these are the basic terminologies used in the type of proofs now we need a few basic definition the first definition is what do you mean by even number suppose we are saying n is a even integer it means there exist an integer k such that n is equal to 2 times of k so we can say that if any number can be written as twice of some integer that number is called as even and if the integer is written as twice of some integer plus 1 that is called as odd number similarly we can define what do you mean by perfect square like we are saying 4 is a perfect square because it is written as 2 square 9 is a perfect square number because it is a 3 square 16 is a perfect square number because it is written as 4 square so with the help of this we can define perfect square number suppose n is a perfect square if and only if there exists an integer k such that n can be written as integer square moving towards the first type of a proof that is direct proof now when we can apply the direct proof basically direct proof is used to show that the conditional statement p implies q is true in this proof we will assume that p statement is true and then we will show that q must also be true in short if we have the conditional statement p is implied to q we need to prove the statement as a true statement what we need to do in the first step we assume hypothesis of the conditional statement is true means p statement is true after that our target is to show that conclusion q of this conditional statement is also true either with the help of axiom definition or previously proven theorem in short direct proofs are quite straight forward proofs let's understand with the help of example example is we need to prove that if n is odd integer then its square is also odd so first step is always identify what is a p and what is a q means what is a hypothesis and what is a conclusion so in this case we are representing hypothesis as p n that is n is odd integer we need to take the statement as true and after that we need to show that n square is odd that is a conclusion it is represented here by q n after writing this we will move to the direct proof in which we assume that hypothesis of this conditional statement is true now what is a hypothesis that is n is odd so we assume that n is odd now if n is odd with the help of definition we can say that n can be written as 2k plus 1 where k is some integer we can also write k belongs to 
set of integers. So this represents the set of integers. Now if n is odd and we have written n is equal to 2k plus 1. Now we need to move towards the q statement that is n square is odd. It means we need to take the square on both sides. So this is as equal to 4k square plus 4k plus 1. Now we need to prove this is odd. Odd means it is of the form 2 into some integer plus 1. So it means we need to take 2 outside from the first 2 terms and this plus 1 as it is. So we can write 2 into 2k square plus 2k plus 1. Now we need to check whether this is an integer. Check it. k is any integer. 2 into integer is again an integer. 2 into k square is again an integer. So we can write 2k square into k. This is also an integer. So let it be a x. So we can write this as equal to 2 into x plus 1 where x is equal to 2k square plus 2 and it belongs to the set of integers or we can say it is some integer. So again by the definition of the odd integer from here we can conclude n square is odd. So consequently we have shown that if n is odd then n square is also odd. So this type of a proof is called as the direct proof. Straight forward proof we will start from the hypothesis and then we will move towards the conclusion. Let's take one more example. Give a direct proof that if m and n both are perfect square then its product is also a perfect square. Now what is the hypothesis and what is the conclusion as per this statement? Hypothesis is m and n are perfect squares and conclusion is we need to prove their product is also perfect square. With the help of direct proof, we assume that hypothesis is true. Means we can say that by direct proof, we assume that hypothesis of the conditional statement is true implies m and n are perfect square numbers. Now by definition of perfect square what we have? So we can write m is equal to some integer square and n is also is equal to some integer square and we also need to mention s and t are some integer or we can write s and t belongs to set of integer. Now we need to comment on its product means m into n is what? So multiply both one, m into n can be written as s square into t square. That can be further written as s into s, t into t. Now we can commute this s with this t. So we can write s into t, s into t. That is by commutative law. After that we can use the associative and we can write s t whole square. So here we have used commutative and associative properties. So from here we can say that m into n is equal to st raised to power 2 means some integer square where s and t is equal to some integer. So if we can write any number as an integer square, so we can write this as a perfect square. So by the definition of perfect square, it follows that product is also a perfect square because it is a square of s into t which is an a integer. So this is how we need to prove that statement is true. For practice, you can take this example, prove that sum of two odd integer is even. So this statement is get converted into the conditional statement. We can say that if there are two odd integer and after adding two integer we are getting a even number. 
So we can take in this case hypothesis as A and B are two odd integers. Then you need to show that A plus B is even. 